In this video clip here, we're going to demonstrate how the Spiretize system works very easily to build walls. We have come to figure out a way to make the wall building system even easier without using the alignment tool. What you see in front of you here is the rapid bench. The bench makes it possible for us to build sections of wall forms 2 foot by 8 foot, 2 foot tall by 8 foot long. The spire ties are pre-connected and then slid into their appropriate slots based on the layout. The beauty of this system is that you can do it in a controlled environment, whether it's on the job site or if it's back at the shop and have the boxes simply transported to the site. One box, 2 foot by 8 foot, takes one man approximately 5 to 6 minutes to assemble. So it makes it very easy and very affordable to build these boxes. So the feature that we want to bring to your attention here are those tabs that are coming out of the center of the spider tie. This particular tie is called our 523 system, allowing you 5 inches of concrete on the outside, 2 inches of foam in the center, and 3 inches of concrete on the inside. So once your box is put in place, that's when you're going to go ahead and slide in your insulation foam board. Now, this insulation foam board comes in many different forms. The densities will determine the R values that it gives you. But in a mild climate, a standard EPS foam board is more than sufficient. Another design feature that we've built into the 523 system is the ability to move your styrofoam board to the interior surface of your wall. This gives you more concrete to the exterior. If you're building a three-story building, this may be necessary, giving you more structural strength. The other added feature is the ability to double up your insulation board, so you have one in the center and one to the interior. This doubles up your R value of the panels that you're using. Then you would just finish the inside with drywall like you would in any other application. At this point, you simply slide in your horizontal rebar. Now what you want to keep in mind is that these boxes are all 8 foot long. If you cut your rebar to 10 foot, it makes it very easy to slide that rebar in and gives you the proper 2 foot overlap or 40 times the diameter of the rebar. With the vertical bars, we've found a little trick that works really good. It's been in the trades for quite some time. We take a piece of inch and a half PVC pipe and cut it about an inch and a half long to two inches and slide it onto your J bars in the very beginning. This creates a nice little cradle for the vertical bars to simply hold themselves together without any tie wire. And then you simply tie the top of the rebar at the top of the wall. This holds all the rebar in place so there's no movement during the pouring process. So the tabs on the spider ties help hold the styrofoam board in place during the pouring process. But you will want to keep in mind that as you fill the wall, you'll want to fill the inside and the outside evenly. This will eliminate any uneven pressure on the foam board. Now there's a very unique advantage that comes with the 523 system. The 5 inches is more than adequate for a continuous load wall, and it's good to up to two stories without any additional structural requirements. But here's the beauty. The inside 3 inches gives you thermal mass, and it's very hard to get thermal mass and resistance values out of a wall. The styrofoam takes care of anything that's happening on the outside, but the concrete on the inside, as we mentioned, works as thermal mass or as a battery, collecting heat or storing heat or cold for whatever's generated on the inside. So you get the benefit of both. Another very good advantage is that there is no furring required on the inside to finish the wall. Since your insulation is embedded in the wall, all you simply need to do is skim coat and paint the interior surface. Your wall is then finished. Now if you do have a point load requirement or your design is set up for post and beam, then you simply remove the foam board in the areas where your post would be and cut back the foam to the depth of the beam based on your requirements and put in the necessary rebar. The best part of this process is that you can pour your columns, your beams, and your infill all in one pour. There's no delay between those three features, saving you a tremendous amount of time. With the spider tie system, you can build post and beam in one third the time that traditional methods take. Let's briefly talk about electrical and plumbing. Since the spider tie boxes are only two foot tall, it's easy to take the electrical boxes that you have made up and attach them into the interior of the box as needed to whatever elevation you want. Same with your plumbing. If you plan this out ahead of time, you can have the assemblies made up and place them in the wall as you stack up your boxes. So this photo illustrates so you can see that once the plywood is removed, the face of the box will be fully exposed. So you don't have to cut out the plywood on the box to receive the electrical outlet or plumbing for that matter. So this is the conclusion of part one, showing the basics of the spider tie wall system. 
and its various forms and ways that you can use it. Now we're going to give consideration to the most important part of any structure, and that's the roof, especially in areas where there are severe weather problems such as hurricanes and tornadoes. So we'll be reviewing this in part two.